Hey guys, we've got a new video today. This is a D&D character that I was commissioned to illustrate, to paint, and um, we're just going to do something a little bit different. We'll be watching the video and instead of having a super quick video with some music playing. We're going to I'm going to talk and just kind of go over the process real quick. It'll still be uh, a quick rundown. We're not going to go super in depth, but um, I'll just kind of explain what I'm doing as it happens and just kind of see how that goes. Um, so I won't stretch this intro out too long. We'll just kind of jump right in. And here we go. As ever, I like to start with some super loose line work. This character was supposed to be kind of, if you're familiar with Game of Thrones, it's sort of supposed to be similar to like the wildlings, the wildlings, easy for me to say. And um, we were trying to keep it in that vein. He's supposed to be holding like a big axe, just kind of just a big burly redhead, which was cool. I was I was sort of excited to jump into this one. So um, I jump in with some really loose line work and just try to work out the little details and the posture. I think after looking at this for a little while, it, the the pose felt really static. He was really straight up and down. So I change it slightly. I, I think I just start playing around with that that right arm to try to get something that was a little more interesting. Um, but, uh, this is typical of what my process is. Um, I did change up a little bit for this, for these series of paintings. Um, I wanted to stay in grayscale a lot longer and try to color from there. Cause usually I would do some line work like this. And then once I was done, I'd go over it and just redo it all with really tight line work. Well, I say really tight, but fairly tight line work and then jump straight into color under it combine the layers and just kind of shade and do everything from there but I, I wanted to see what the process would be like to stay in grayscale for a long time and really get a lot of the rendering done so um, it was an interesting process I learned a lot doing this series of paintings and and I like it I like this process I think it works well I have a long sort of history in sketching and I think um Staying in grayscale is a little bit easier for me to see the forms and to figure the values and and um, just overall shapes, I think, are a little bit easier for me to see that way. But as this goes, um, I just kind of continue to define the different textures and things like this. One, this was interesting one since we had so much fur as part of the um, as part of the outfit. And I've, I mean, I've painted fur before, but not a lot, and especially not recently. So it was interesting to dive back into that and try to figure that out and try to get a texture that I felt um, looked good. I think I wasn't really happy with it until the very end. I took some time to really look at reference, and which, uh, which is a, a problem that I think artists, myself certainly included, have is that we uh, we like to just kind of dive right in and try to figure things out, and you really need to be looking at ref reference. It's, it's silly to not pull up pictures and, and things and to, to take the time to study those things to make them look right. Like, we have so much resources available to us with the internet. Like, it's, it's crazy to not, to not get uh, as many references as you can. playing around with the size of this axe. I think after I showed the client, my client was, was nice enough to jump on stream so that I um, could get some kind of real-time feedback. Um, and in doing so, I think between that and Discord, we were talking a lot. And uh, he told me that the axe was a bit small, that it's supposed to be a much longer two-hand kind of battle axe. So I, um, I increased the length of it and to try to get it more to... To, what, to the size it's actually supposed to be here. And you can see, which is part of um, why I wanted to try to do this, If you, you could see there that I changed the value of that axe to make it stand out more in front of them. And this that's the type of thing that's a lot harder to, for me in particular to see. If I had jumped into color earlier, it would have been much harder for me to see that uh, the values really needed to separate more on that axe. I think they still would have looked pretty separate because I, I would have always put a drop shadow behind it, and the texture is so much more different than what the um, than uh, what the fur is. But uh, 
I think making a small change like that, changing the the value of it to be a bit darker helps so much in, in separating those forms. It means a lot in the end. It was interesting going through this process because, like I said, like I, by this point, I would have been well and truly into the color. And um, like this part where I'm, I'm really tightening things up would have been all done in color. So it was just, it was really interesting going back in. Like you can see what I did right there. I created a multiply layer and kind of went around the edges and uh, and darkened them to try to give uh, more of a sense that the, the form is turning away from you to give a bit more volume to the forms. And uh, I mean, that's the sort, I would have done something similar in the color stage, but uh, it's just so much easier for me to see in the, in the gray skill. And here you can see, I think I play around with, I think I did this in overlay. I, um, once I was done with the gray scale, I made an, a clipping mask and put it on overlay and just chose my colors. But, uh, I think as I continue experimenting with this process, I end up using a multiply layer. The overlay works, but it, it ends up giving really saturated colors. And um, I don't really like working from the beginning with really saturated colors because I feel like uh, saturated colors and really strong highlights are things that you need to use in moderation, I think. And so I like to leave those towards the end so I uh, have more control of what I'm punching with a super strong highlight or or what I'm uh, punching with super strong saturation. And you can see that overlay layer made my highlights and my colors really, um, really saturated. I don't think I've done it quite yet, but at some point I think I use the uh, hue saturation tool to, to desaturate because it, it was just too much. It was too much. But um, at this point, I've, everything is figured out. I like this because like, at this point while I'm painting, I'm not, I'm just kind of, I'm adding detail. I'm not figuring out any of the shapes. I mean, there are things I adjust here and there as I see them. Like you just saw there, I think I adjust the shoulder some. I, I, I thought the posture or the, the, the placement of that shoulder was a little weird. But I'm not trying to figure out any of the forms at this point. I'm just, just doing detail work. And it made the painting process a lot easier for me. Oh, here we go. I jump into the into the texture, and this takes um this takes me a while. I, I I have to figure out a process that gives me the effect that I want. And I was looking at lots of references for bare fur, and um, finally I kind of figure out that I need to make these really dark strokes and build it up from from the bottom kind of by making kind of darker strokes and building up lighter and lighter. Uh, layers on top of it to make it look really shaggy and to give the fur itself itself some depth like it doesn't need to look like this amorphous blob like it needs to actually have a depth in the texture in the uh, you know in the uh, in the hair and the fur so I finally found a process that uh, was giving me the effect that I wanted so I just kind of rinse and repeat everywhere and, and just try to as I'm adding the layers I'm trying to continue to stay true to the values that I've set under it so even though I'm kind of working from the bottom up with the darker values and the fur I'm trying to make sure as I'm out, l adding the lighter values that I'm staying true to the values of the colors that I had already established on top if that makes any sense But this was um this was a fun piece. I like these kind of uh. I like being able to just sit down with a single character and not try to worry about, you know, lots of other things going on in the background and just concentrate on getting the feel and the mood of the character themselves. Right, I I, I find that um. I find it a lot of fun. I'm going through trying to refine these textures.
it was nice having a really good reference of this weapon so that I could get it, you know, make sure I'm getting all the little details right. Getting good references from your client is uh, is something that's really important, I've found, after doing a, a lot of these commission pieces. Because um, your client knows what they want. You know, but they're, you, you should never expect them to be artists and to know exactly what it is that you need to give them what they want. You have to, you know, that, that has to be your job. So, um, luckily with this client, he, he had lots of great references for me. So, it was really easy to come together with this. And, and we're done. Um, but like I said, like a, this client in particular just had really good references and, and made the process really easy. But it's something to remember when you're doing um, work like this for someone that... Uh, that ask for references like it can be a little awkward or a little you, you don't want to be off-putting but um you need to ask for as much information as possible from your client to, to make sure it's your crystal clear what it is that they're expecting out of an illustration because you want them to be happy you want them to spread the good word <laughs> and you want them to come back to you later when they want something else you know that's how you build your client base just just do everything you can to make sure your client's happy and one of the best ways of doing that is um just pushing for some reference material and making sure that they're a part of the process as much as possible. Like this person was on Twitch with me a lot and we were talking on Discord. I was sharing pictures there. But even when someone isn't able to do that, I like to email fairly frequently um, to let them see how sketches are going and the different stages are going so that if there's something that they don't like, we can we can address it right away and we're not trying to fix things at the very end when we've already done all the work. It, it can be really hard to change things at that point. So I, I just think it's really important to keep your client involved with what you're doing and um, it helps a lot with the end product and making sure they're happy. But that's it. I won't keep droning on. I hope you enjoyed this. Um, if there's anything else you'd like me to go over, just let me know. I'll probably probably be cutting together another video similar to this of some of the other D&D characters I was doing for this client. And uh, we'll talk about that then. Thanks for hanging out. And I'll see you next time.